Welcome back to the channel. And in case you're not aware or you haven't been following, Windows 10 is coming to an end. Yeah, kind of unfortunate. Windows 10 is coming to an end and you're gonna be forced to have Windows 11. You're not gonna get all the security updates that you need to make sure that your computer's not getting hijacked and somebody's not stealing your information and buying $1,000 worth of cryptocurrency. You know, all that type of stuff. And it's unfortunate because those computers, particularly the i7 6th gen, Intel 6th gen, uh, 4th gen, and I forget the AMD flavors that don't have that TPM support. Some of them are still good computers. Hear me out. I know it's old. Some might say DDR3. Hear me out on this. There are people who just need a computer just to browse the internet. I have a lot of customers like that and I'm able to sell older computers dirt cheap that I pretty much get for free to them. And all they do is just browse the internet, see what's going on in the world, check the emails, all that type of good stuff, see what's new and going on. Watch a couple of videos on YouTube, get on the Facebook, you know, and play those farming simulators, all that type of stuff. And they have a good time. They don't need like the latest and greatest RTX, all that type of stuff. They just need something basic. And those computers definitely check the boxes. And it's sad because when this happens, there's gonna be a lot of e-waste. There's gonna be a, lot, be a lot of people throwing these computers out, being forced to pay money for something that they probably really don't need for what they're gonna use it for. And it's unfortunate. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, you know, there's Rufus. That's right, there's Rufus. And you could do the TPMS um, bypass and all that type of stuff, and it works. And I've been doing that a lot lately, but you know how the world is. Microsoft is eventually gonna, you know, get wind of that, or they already have wind of that. But they're gonna get keen to it, and they're gonna be like, mm -mm -mm, and they're gonna find some way to block that. The past couple of months, I've been experimenting with Linux. That's right, Linux. A lot of you guys have mentioned Linux and all that type of good stuff for this older hardware. I've been using it on a laptop mostly. It's a i7 5th, 4th gen. Can't remember which one it is, but I've been using it on an older i7 4th, 5th gen laptop and I've actually had a pretty good experience with it. It's been really easy to use and very uh, familiar to say the least. Now there's a lot of different flavors of Linux. The one that I've chose to use primarily because it gives you a little bit of both worlds is the Bazite. Bazite allows you to kind of run the whole Steam feel and get some games with Steam and also gives you that classic Windows appearance, which makes it familiar for people. I was on the Facebook Marketplace. I recently just got back from vacation, drove all the way to California. Great place, great people over there. Went to Arizona, all that type of stuff. And I wasn't really doing a used parts hustle, but I found this on the Facebook Marketplace. It was one of those things that was listed for a dollar. You read the description and they say, uh, make an offer. And the story behind this, according to the guy, uh, he took it to Geek Squad to try to get the update and they told him, hey, your computer's too old. You cannot do the uh, Windows 11 update, your SOL. And they tried to sell him a $600 computer. Unfortunate. So he decided to go down the other dark rabbit hole and went with a uh, Apple laptop for $1,000. Hey, if it works, it works. Whatever, more power to him. So I bought this. I offered him $20 and the reason why I offered him $20 and he agreed to it was number one, he didn't know the specs on it. I asked him, what specs does it have? He goes, I don't know. I don't know anything about computers. I just turn them on, browse the internet, check the email. So I offered $20. He said, come and pick it up. So I have this computer. I paid $20 for it. It doesn't support Windows 11. We're going to try to throw Linux on it, the Bazite, pop in a graphics card, see how well it games or doesn't game and see what I got. Cause honestly, I just loaded this in my SUV and it traveled with me for two weeks. So I don't even know what it looks like, but let's find out together. Now, I don't know if this is a gigabyte pre-built or maybe that's the case, GZP seven series. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. He left something in there. And I don't know exactly what it is. I'm looking at it off camera because I don't want to give anybody's personal information, but okay. I think that's an office CD. This is a fix me stick. Lifetime gold virus removal. I've never heard of this. Let me know in the comments. This dude just gave me everything. But I mean, it's too late now. I'm about 4,000 miles away from you, dude, or 2,000? 2,000 miles away from him. All right, so. I hope he doesn't need that. I've done it a thousand times. 
I just leave my USB thing in there and then whoops, now I gotta buy another keyboard and mouse, unfortunate. DVD action, a whole bunch of things in the front for SD cards, a memory card powered by Asus, Intel i7, sweet. Gigabytes case, eh, not bad. How you turn it on? Okay. Pop this panel off. All right, so yeah. Taking a look at it, it's actually not too bad. We don't have a graphics card, so we'll definitely have to put something in there. Mechanical drive? All right, there is an SSD down there, so that's good. It's probably like 128 gigs, so. H87 Plus, stock cooler. Pretty sure this is DDR3. Might be eight gigs. Maybe you can see if we can pop in 16 gigs. Uh, Corsair CX500, this has got a decent power supply. All right, so let's switch angles and let's dive in further. Let's do a little house cleaning. I think what we're gonna do is just delete on this mechanical drive. It's a two terabyte Seagate, which is not bad, but really, I don't know, we'll just maybe keep it in there, just as extra storage, but I really wanna see what SSD we have. Because do I need to upgrade it? And of course, whoever built this actually put screws on the other side. To me, this looks like one of those computers that somebody probably just, uh, you know, one of those mom and pop computer shops, local shops. The guy just built it together. Whoops. I was just taking that out first. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Two hundred and fifty gig SSD. Uh, now let's take this out. And verify our CPU. Pretty sure it's an i7 fourth gen. Could be a third gen. Thermal paste is dry. I7477 one? I know there's a 4770 and a 4770K or whatever. Let's get you in there. That's the first time I've ever seen an I74771. I'm pretty sure it's 4770. I mean, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Now, as far as the memory, let's take a look. Let's see, 8 or 16. And this is going to be 2, 4 gigs. Let's see if we could throw 16 on it. I don't have 2... 8 gigs, but I do have two more 4 gigs, so we'll do that. Ideally, you don't want to mismatch memory, but you know, you do what you got to do. This is DDR3. Now for storage, this is a 2 terabyte SSD. Got a really good deal from a viewer that sold me these, so just pop this in and finally get to use it because I haven't used them. Uh, will this give me the room? Maybe I have to put it up here. Yeah, let's put it up here. Now this is temporary. This is mostly just for testing. I'll use that bracket and all that other good stuff. 
once I decide what I'm going to do with this. So now here's the million dollar question. Do we have PCIe? We should. Yep, we got one. I'm going to throw in this 6600. I think it's the XT, is it? Yeah, 6600 XT. And the reason why I'm going to AMD is because Linux just, it works better with AMD. I think there's more refined drivers or whatever it is. But I've also heard that uh, Linux and NVIDIA has come a long way. And besides, I think this is the only graphics card that will actually fit in this case. She a little old, you know? Whoa. And you're probably saying, oh, you should test it and all that type of stuff. I know this works. I do know it works because the old guy told me it works. And he did tell me that um, before he listed it to sell, he did wipe everything off his computer. So I guess I'm taking his word for it, which might not be the best thing, but why not? We're just going to put in one for now. Like I said, this is mostly... For testing and once we get some more definitive results now I have been using Linux on a laptop not to game but I'm curious on the experience for gaming I mean you're not gonna expect the latest and greatest and I don't know what to expect I'm being honest with you but this is how I learn older hardware and like I've talked about in other videos this is the good thing about older hardware Take something like this, and you learn something like Linux. I really hate this. But it's good enough for who it's for, and that's me. Low standards. So I am drenched in sweat, and it is hot in the garage. I think it's like 95, 96 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm not gonna sit out here and install Linux and play with it out here and all that type of stuff. We will a little bit when I'm done, just to kind of show you the final product on it. But in a nutshell, you go on their website, download Bazite. It's actually what type of mode you wanna use, uh, desktop and uh, laptop and portable device. Obviously, we'll choose desktop on it, and then it asks you Intel, uh, Nvidia, you know, for the graphics card and all that type of stuff. I select AMD because we have an AMD graphics card. And then it asks you KDE or GNOME. I think I chose KDE. That's the one that's more, that gives you the desktop. I think GNOME uh, doesn't give you the desktop. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'll correct it on the screen. And then you just boot into it. Now, to create a bootable device, get Rufus, and Rufus is free. Go to their website, create a bootable device, install it, and you should be good to go. Now, here's something uh, to note. I actually ran into issues installing uh, Bazite on a computer that already had Windows 11 installed in it, and that was that laptop because I did the you know, TPMS bypass thing on it. I had to format that drive, wipe it clean, and then I was able to install Bazite. Um, overriding a Windows 11 uh, installation gives you some issues, so something to note. So I'm going to go ahead, bring this inside, install this off camera, and then hopefully this evening when it cools down, it'll be a lot better. I won't be drenched in sweat. Uh, we can see how this run. So a couple of hours later and a couple of degrees cooler, not by much, but we got Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Steam, on Linux, Bazite, and it's actually running pretty decent. Now, obviously, we're running an i7 4th gen with a 6600 XT, so, you know, that's not a ideal combination, but at least it's enough to show proof of concept that um, you can still that you can still keep this older hardware running on Linux. So now that Windows has pretty much kind of say, bump you guys, you're not gonna run this old stuff. Linux says, sure, why not? And it's pretty cool that uh, how far along Linux has come. Now I'm new diving into it as far as the past couple of months. Um, we're in July, I actually started looking into Linux probably in about March. So I'm about four months into it and I've learned so much. I like the customization and the things that you can do with it. Definitely a learning curve, like I said, but I mean, it gives more life to this older hardware, which is pretty cool. So just to kind of show the performance benchmark, 78 frames per second, 1080p, high settings. And like I said, our CPU is really gonna hold us back a bunch. 
But let's get out of this. Quit. Yes. Yeah, just regular old Steam. You install it. Now, I'll put some pictures on the screen. On the laptop, I played some of those older potato games, Day of the Tentacle, uh, Monkey Island. They run great. No issues. Now, I haven't played with this with um, beefier hardware to kind of see, you know, how it really performs. But just kind of the research I've done, it does do pretty good in, like, the performance difference compared to, like, Windows 11, from what I heard, is negligible. Plus, they're always, like, fine-tuning this, so there is hope that it probably not going to even notice the performance difference, difference, if any. The more I get into it, the more I like it, and it's kind of nice that, number one, I don't have to worry about random Windows updates. You kind of update it as you need it. It's actually spiffier, so this i7 4th gen actually runs a lot better on this compared to Windows 11. So it's a really cool operating system, and it's awesome to see how, how far along Linux has come compared to before where it was... Not as user friendly in my experience when I messed with it a couple of years ago and gaming on it was just very tricky, but this is awesome. And if they fine tune this, I mean, goodbye Microsoft. But here's the thing. So here's the thing. Although it's come a long way, it's very similar in some retrospects to Windows and gaming on it is possible. The problem they're going to run into is that people are not going to be used to it. So if I was to put this up for sale as a window, as a Linux gaming PC, yes, they'll be good with the whole Steam thing, but there's still a lot of programs that don't work. And then to get some things to work, it's not hard or impossible, but it's not as convenient as Windows. Um, people like Windows, unfortunately, because it's very convenient and it's been used for so many times. But I truly think that if we were to just, you know, start pushing this out more, you know, and people would just dive into it, we wouldn't even need Microsoft for anything. So in a nutshell, Intel 6th gen and older, and the same thing with the AMD side that doesn't have the TPMS support, are they officially done for? No, there's still more life left for it. Uh, Linux gives you that life. You have the TPMS thing, which also gives you that extra lifespan of it. But the issue that you're gonna run into is that a lot of these games don't have the CPU instructions on that. But if you're able to look past some of these newer games, there's still a great Steam library of games that you can play. Um, I look forward to see how this thing develops and I'm definitely gonna continue using it. I'm not saying that I'm gonna switch my main rig to uh, Linux, but it's definitely gonna be something I will be using in my secondary rig. So I think I got a pretty good deal for this, $20. Am I gonna flip it or anything like that? No, absolutely not. I'm actually gonna keep um, Linux Bazite on that and just keep tinkering with it. That's the thing I always talk about with these older PCs. Great opportunities to learn on. You don't have to mess up your nice rig. So all that being said, comment down below, let me know if those concerns, criticisms. What version of Linux do you like using? What are your experiences using Bazite and the whole Steam thing? And do you really think older hardware is officially done for? This is a wasp. Let's move over here. Okay, now we can finish the video. If you like this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe if you're not, and as always, we'll see what we come up with next.